All right, one last method for you and big credit to Susie for being the one who thought of this method. I think it's a delightful solution path. So let's have a look at it together. Um, the key piece of knowledge that we're gonna use here is not um, algebraic uh, manipulation or um, you know the, the kind of different forms of the complex numbers that we were manipulating before, which was the key in our different solutions. This time what we're gonna do is try and employ our knowledge of vectors um, because you can think of this as a 2D vector problem um, to sort of wrap our head around the geometry here and uh, you know work out what are the perspectives that are going to help us solve this question prove this result together so here's the way it works I'm going to think about this um, sort of situation here with zero um, u uh, I'll just do that in like a lowercase here and then v up here we're going to think of these um, not so much as different numbers or we will think of them as numbers but prim primarily I'd like us to think of them as points on the complex plane and therefore you join two points together, um, you get a vector. And it's important as well that you think about the direction that you're joining those two points in. So for example, if I called um, you know, the complex number u, if it was represented by the point a, and we took the complex number v and represented that with the point b, um, as an example, uh, o to a is different to A to O. When we were thinking about these just as complex numbers, direction doesn't really, you know, this way or that way doesn't matter as much uh, in terms of, you know, being able to think about this one little interval here. But um, OA and AO are actually opposite to each other and that's going to be quite important in this proof. So let's have a think about how to conceive of this. What I think is going to be most helpful is to actually take a single object in this geometric scenario and look at it from two different perspectives. Uh, and you can do this a bunch of different ways, but I think the most helpful one is going to be this side of the equilateral triangle over here. Um, you could think of it as AB, but I'm actually going to, and you're going to see why this is in a second, I think it's going to be more um, easy for us to work with if we actually think of it as BA. So you can see I've got that arrow there indicating direction, so I'm starting up here at B and I'm going down to A. Now, in terms of um, this vector BA, I can think about it in a couple of different ways. And because I can think about it or define it in a couple of different ways, those two perspectives, if they both shed light on the same object, those two perspectives we can equate with each other. Um, and much like, say, comparing coefficients when we're doing you know, polynomials, partial fractions, um, that comparison from two different perspectives will yield insight and allow us to solve what's going on. So, what's the first way we can think about uh, B? B, A, this vector here, and I'm just gonna sort of, uh, I'll, I'll write it like so, B, A. Okay, well the first thing is, let's zoom out and I'll shuffle this over so I've got a bit of space to actually write over here. I can think about B, A as an, a, a pair of vectors that are added together and concatenated together, or do one after the other, um, line up heads and tails and just kind of string them together. Can you see in this situation, uh, what two vectors I need to add up so how can I consider this as a vector addition problem to equal BA, right? Have a think about this for a second. Uh, by vector addition, I can think of vector BA as any string of vectors that start from B and end up at A. Of course, I can just go directly there, BA, but I can actually also take this kind of long scenic route from B via the origin over to A. And the reason why this is going to be useful is it will help us relate to the actual complex numbers, U and V, that are highly underneath our points A and B. So in this case, if I'm starting over at B and I want to end up at A, then the first step to go via the origin is go B to O and then O to A, that'll be my set of steps, right? So again, please note the direction here. I'm going from B down toward the origin, and then I'm gonna go from the origin over to A. So if I you know, string this vector after this vector, then you're gonna get the desired result. So just so I can distinguish this, let me just put a color on this. There you go, so we'll highlight that in purple. So I'm gonna go um, B, O, and then I'm gonna add O, a. Does that make sense? And this is the uh, this is that highlighted vector B which is going to be crucial in a minute. Okay, so once I've got this, the reason why this is useful is because if the complex number V represents going up to B from O to B, doing that uh, translation as it were, then if I'm going to do B to O, that's the same as doing V but in the opposite direction. It's minus V, right? So therefore, instead of writing, I'm going to now convert this into complex numbers. Instead of writing BO, I can write that as minus V. And in much the same way, but more straightforward, OA, that vector there, is just in a straightforward way represented by the complex number 
u. So I can write that as plus u. And I guess it'd be a bit more um, sensible to write that uh, subtraction in order that doesn't put the negative first. So I'm gonna say ba equals u take away v, okay? So that's the first perspective on BA. What's another perspective that we can use? Well, remember this question has told us that zero U and V, they form an equilateral triangle. And the properties of equilateral triangles can be very useful to us and we're gonna use them in a second. So what I'm gonna say is, since this triangle, uh, AOB, is equilateral, How can I take advantage of this fact? Well, I can say lots of things about it, but the thing that's gonna be most useful to me in sort of manipulating these vectors is that I've got um, an angle of pi on three in every single one of the corners. It's an equilateral triangle, so all the angles are the same. Now, this angle here, or rather this uh, vector here, BA, I can think of it as the same as vector BO, but rotated by pi on three radians, and this is important, anti-clockwise. Think about this, right? If you think of this pi on three radians angle up here, and you can see it going from this vector uh, BO, and the direction is preserved, you can see it starts from B, radiates out toward O, then it radiates out toward A, you can see the hand of the clock, as it were, being turned back anti-clockwise pi on three radians. And that's really important. Often when people are doing uh, vector reasoning like this, they get their anti-clockwise and their clockwise you know, confused. So therefore, what I can say is, since AOB is equilateral, going back to, that vector BA, I can think of it as that same vector we started with, BO, this one over here, but instead of adding on vector OA, so that addition there, which took us um, down here and then towards here, I can just think of this vector and do the rotation. What is the arithmetic uh, in complex number land that and sort of is equivalent to this vector rotation, right? The geometric operation. And the answer is because it's going in the right direction, anti-clockwise, I just need to multiply by um, a vector of one unit. I don't wanna make it longer or shorter. BO and BA are equivalent in, in length, but I want to rotate it around by pi on three Radians. So this is the complex number that has the same magnitude, sorry, uh, a magnitude of one, so it doesn't stretch out or shorten my, uh, my BO vector, uh, but it rotates it in that anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so I hope you can see that equivalence there. That's why I've drawn them in the same color. Okay, now the thing is, I can actually say, like I mentioned before, this BO is equal to minus V, and then that's multiplied by E to the I pi on three. Okay, so what I've got here, and I'll just highlight it here in blue, one here and one here. I have two alternative ways to say BA, right? And these must be equal to each other because they're both the same vector, right? So I'm therefore gonna conclude, therefore, minus V E to the I pi on three, what that must be equal to is u take away v, looking at my two blue stars there, right? So you can see me sort of getting that one result out of these two things here. Here is, uh, I'm just gonna put these down here. Zoop. Like so, so I hope you can see the logical connection there. Okay, now we're almost ready. You can see here, that I've got this equation here, which I know doesn't quite look like it, but this is going to be the bedrock. Uh, in fact, it's so important, I'm gonna give it a name. Let's call this equation one. This is gonna be the bedrock to get us to the result we were trying to prove. So I just need one last piece of the puzzle, which is to be able to get, like see how this is all in terms of Vs and Us, except for this one little pesky complex number hanging out in there, right? So if I can get that in terms of u's and v's, then I can make that substitution and then I'll have an equation that relates u and v and hopefully I should be able to manipulate that to get to the desired result that I'm trying to prove. So how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna do this uh, same trick, right? I, I know that AOB is equilateral, so this sort of clockwise rotation to get from one, one vector to another by pi on three radians, I can do it as many times as I like, and it's, it's going to enable me to use this e to the i pi on three relationship uh, and substitute it for something else, okay? So since I'm using the same logic that I have an equilateral triangle, I'm just gonna say similarly, and then I can relate this u and this v in the same kind of pi on three relationship that I saw before. So what color have I not used yet? Um, I'll use, I'll use, I'm just gonna pull out a new color. This is gonna be super colorful. Okay, so this is pi on three, 
here. Um, and you can see, again, it's an anti-clockwise rotation, but notice OA, OA is going to ret uh, rotate anti-clockwise pi on three radians. It's not gonna turn into BO, it's gonna turn into OB. Can you see me rotating around the origin? Up here, I rotated around B because that was the tail of the vector. Here, I'm rotating around the origin because this is the tail of the vector. I've got a different reference point, okay? So by similar logic, I can say the way to get to angle or rather vector OB, it's the same purple vector, but I'm looking at it in reverse order. It's the same as OA. And then I'm multiplying by, uh, I'll use orange, like I said. Uh, it's the same transformation, but I'm getting it from a different spot geometrically. So that's why I'm trying to highlight it in a different way. That's e to the i pi on three. And now I just need to substitute what, what are OB and OA, not in terms of vectors, but in terms of complex numbers. So this is just gonna be V. This is U, and then I've got E to the I pi on three trailing on the end. And remember, what was my goal here, right? What I was trying to get was a way to substitute this E to the I pi on three um, into here so that it's not in this, this equation one that I've written, right? So all I need to do is to make E to the I pi on three the subject of this equation. So I'm gonna divide through, I'll put the E to the I pi on three on the left-hand side rather than the right-hand side. And simultaneously, I'm gonna divide through by U. You can see that'll get that over to the other side. So I've got V over U and let's call that equation two, all right? And now I'm ready to go. We've done all of this vector thinking and I'm, uh, that's, I can now put that to one side because the vector thinking has enabled me to make these um, statements about the complex numbers themselves. And so I'm gonna substitute this result that we just determined, uh, which I'm calling equation two. I'm gonna substitute it back into one and then see what eventuates. So let's have a go. When I put in, um, when I write rather, this left-hand side, I start with the minus V, but instead of writing E to the I pi on three, this is a substitution that I'm um, uh, putting in here, right? So that's gonna be V over U. See that, you're following? So this is, uh, this is this result that's just gone in here. So that's what's happening on the left-hand side. The right-hand side, I don't need to change very much. It's U take away V. And all I need to do is to, blink and you'll miss it, um, multiply through by U, right? If I multiply through by U, I get minus V squared on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I get U squared minus U V. And this is pretty much it, right? All I need to do is to add a V squared uh, onto both sides. And I also need to um, add a UV onto both sides to get them in the right spots. And that'll give me UV equals U squared plus V squared. And this was the result I was trying to prove. So what I love about this method is that it's still the same old scenario, right? Um, we haven't changed this equilateral triangle and the origin, but we've thought about it in a whole different way. Is it longer or shorter? I mean, I, I think that's less important. It's the kind of vector thinking, which I think is so wonderful here. There are gonna be other questions where even if this method is longer than some of the other methods we looked at before or more complicated in terms of the algebra, there'll be other questions that demand this kind of manipulation of vectors. So I think it's really helpful to wrap your head around how the the logic of this fits so that you can use it in other situations. Um, you know, you want to be more flexible, as flexible as you can with all the tools in your toolbox. And the more you're used to looking at the same problem, but attacking it from different angles and using different methods, um, the more flexible you'll be able to determine the most appropriate method when you encounter a new problem.